you know, I'm sure you were all watching um, Wes Streeting on LBC. If you weren't, then I've got a clip for you so you can see it yourself. You, you won't miss out on this. This is fantastic. From Wes Streeting, the Shadow Health Minister. About the fact that one of the things I will have to do if I'm the country's next health secretary is use the private sector to bring down NHS waiting lists. And this has been controversial. I mean, I've had people from some of my own side saying, you know, this is an extension of privatisation. This is against kind of what Labour should stand for. Uh, and look, I'm not talking about privatising the NHS I'd, over my dead body. I believe in an NHS that is publicly funded, free at the point of use, a public service. That's, that's, that's my values. That's what I believe in. That's what I stand for. And I love the NHS, not just because I think it's one of the greatest institutions this country has ever built, but because last year the NHS saved my life when I had kidney cancer. I wouldn't be here talking to you were it not for the fantastic team of, uh, you know, radiographers who did my scans and diagnostics, the urologists who identified the tumour and referred me, the surgeon who performed the surgery, the brilliant nursing team around me. Uh, and all the way through, I was thinking how remarkable it is that I live in a country where I'm not worried about the bill, where I'm not going to be hit with the invoice or being asked to see my credit card before I go in for treatment. I think that's wonderful. And I want to protect that. But I'm not going to sit by and watch working class people who can't afford to pay to go private stuck at the back of the queue while other people are paying to go private and jump in the queue. And if, and there is spare capacity in the private sector, I would rather the NHS paid for people to use that capacity to bring down the NHS waiting lists than have people waiting long for care. I think that's the right thing to do. And frankly, I don't think people would thank me or the Labour Party if I said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Miggins, I know you're waiting for a double hip replacement and your life is utter misery, but my principles say that I can't use the NHS budget to pay for you to be seen quicker because that's against my principles. You can wait longer. I'm not prepared to do that. And, and the, the other thing I'd say on this is, of course, it's not the answer. It can't be the long-term answer that we just spend taxpayers' money in the private sector, which is more expensive. No, what I want to do is two things. One is make the NHS so good that no one ever feels they have to pay to go private. And the second thing I want to do is make sure the NHS has got the capacity in the system so that the NHS never has to pay for people to go private either. But I'm just looking at these record waiting lists and I'm looking at these figures telling me that more and more people are paying to go private. And I think we've got to pull all the levers and pull out all of the stops to get those waiting lists down. Joining uh, us to talk about uh, West Street in the Shadow Health Secretary's statement that, I mean, it was, it was all on his own. No one was pressuring him to say any of this. He just said effectively that um, we need more people to use private health care to reduce NHS waiting lists. That's the only way I can interpret that. Is that how you see that, Dr. Bob Gill? Um, what I saw from West Streeting was a highly polished performance, but what he has delivered is a shit sandwich. He claims to be the honest, um, pragmatic politician, uh, privatisation over my dead body. Then he goes on to advocate privatisation. You couldn't make it up. Outsourcing is a feature of privatization. He doesn't mention the alternative, which could be to take control over private capacity. Why not nationalize private capacity? Um, he states a couple of principles of the NHS. He talks about uh, publicly funded, but what he doesn't mention is key. He doesn't mention publicly provided. He doesn't mention universal. He doesn't mention comprehensive because all those things have already gone. Neither does he go into the background of why are we in this situation? We're in this situation because we had a PFI fueled scam, which led to the massive cutting of beds. That's number one. The other reason we've got a problem with waiting lists is because the staff are leaving in droves. And we've had 10 years of austerity with staff wage stagnation. He then pulls on our heartstrings. And again, sounds very convincing. The NHS saved my life. Well, th the purpose of that line is to cynically exploit his own Ill, Ill health to create in the listener a conviction that how could a man whose life was saved by the NHS then go on and shaft it? Well, look at Boris Johnson. 
we heard about his near-death experience with COVID, and he brought in the final nail into the NHS coffin, which is the Health and Social Care Bill, July 2022, on which we have not heard one word coming out of West Streeting's mouth. Why not? Because it converts the NHS into an, a managed care system, which is entirely going to reproduce the American system where they do look for your credit card and they will ask you to pay. So it is a good performance. It is convincing. And unless you understand what he's trying to do and what he's leaving out, you will be hoodwinked. This is a very good car salesman, what we've just seen there. Um, and then he paints himself as a working class defender, having to be pragmatic and buy up this private sector capacity. Well, you know, the working class will not forgive the Labour Party imposed ignorance about what has unfolded. They are deliberately keeping us in the dark. Let's not forget the Labour Party conference committed to uh, not privatizing the NHS, but West Streeting is talking about a form of privatization. So, you know, you've got to hand it to him. He did a good job. He, and then he finishes off by saying some things which are valid. He talks about the pain and agony if you're on a waiting list. He talks about the un, undiagnosed cancers. He talks about the worst outcomes. If you delay treatment, it costs more. Well, I couldn't agree more. That's all correct. But his medicine for the NHS is going to kill the NHS. That's the problem. And Labour are committed, they're doubling down on the Alan Milburn policy from 2000, which for the first time brought in the private sector to deliver health care. And that's what he's doubling down on. So don't be hoodwinked. This is a masterful con job from a used car salesman. That's what we've seen.